So the next thing I want to show you is a multi-group analysis. Uh, multi-group is something that Smart PLS 2 was very weak on. Uh, there was actually nothing built in to address multi-group. Um, but Smart PLS 3 is uh, locked and loaded, ready to go. It has some great features for um, multi-group effects. So what we want to do is uh, first go look at um, your options here. If you were to go to uh, the calculate, you'll see that down here there is a multi-group analysis option. The problem is when you click it um, and this shows up, you have no groups listed because you haven't set up any groups yet. So what you need to do first is go set up some groups. So let me close this and let's go set up some groups. To do that, double click on the data you're using. And double click right there and you can add group data manually one at a time or you can just generate group data out of some variables. Um, let's do this real quick. I know we have gender in here um, so we could use that as a grouping variable but I think we have a fairly small female group compared to our male group so I wonder if there's a better uh, multi-group variable perhaps something like experience um, let's go with that at the top here use Excel we have a little bit of variance um, Excel experience here we go the mean on Excel experience is 4.5 and the max is 21. Um, how about a frequency? Mean of 5.6, max of 8. So if we were to cut that at 5, that might work. Let's try this. So let's go to generate group data right here. And what are we going to call this? Uh, we'll just call it, um, well, let me show you what happens if I put gender in here. Um, but I'm not going to use gender. So what you do is you select a column. In this case, we go find gender. It's in alphabetical order uh, right now. And it says I have... Let me zoom in. It says I have two unique values. So it will automatically create two groups um, as long as each group has at least 10 members in it. Now I could change that to 100, and if I do that, it would actually only generate one group. Um, so no good. Uh, it, let me go ahead and generate that, and I can generate some more in a moment. So I hit OK. It automatically generates those two groups. You can see here I have 208 males uh, two and 65 females. I could go and edit these and say this one um, is male, group name male. Um, and I can even change all sorts of stuff in here, how it all works. Um, I can make a stronger criteria by adding other terms. It's got to be uh, male is equal to one and uh, some other variable is equal to three or something like that. Um, but that's good enough for me right now. I'm going to hit OK. And let me go change this one to be female. Um, right here, edit and call them females just so I have them straight in my head. Here we go. And OK. But again, that's not the grouping I want to use. I want to use a different set of groups. So let me go back to uh, generate data groups. And this time I'm going to do um, uh, use frequency, I think is what I really call it frequency of use. And I want to use, um, is it called Excel? Oops. I skipped it. Here we go. Excel experience. No, it's the one up above it. Uh, not education. Oh, maybe I called it use. Did I call it Excel use or just use? Probably just use. Down at the very bottom here. Lots of variables. Here, use Excel. And um, what I want is instead of I don't want seven groups, haha. <laughs> um, I only want two groups. Hmm. Hit cancel. I'm going to add data group manually. So add data group. I'm going to call this uh, low frequency. And it's got to be such that at the very bottom, use Excel is lower than five add term. Nope, don't need to add any more terms. And hit OK. And then I'm going to create another one. Uh, add group. I'm going to call this high frequency. And the same terms apply, except I'm going to say greater than. Let's see, is higher than. And last time I used 5, so it's less than 5, but this time it's going to be greater than if I say 5, then there's no one with a 5 in there, which I guess is good, because then I have uh, nobody in the middle. I definitely have lows and highs. 
Okay, I'm gonna hit OK on that. And now we have these groups here, uh, high frequency, low frequency, and look, we have 75 and 158 in the other, kind of small groups, um, but that will do, I suppose. Let me just, we'll, we'll pull in the other group. We'll say it's lower than six. So that means the others are six and above, and these are less than six. There we go, 105 and 75. That's a little better. Okay, let's now go do a multigroup analysis. So if I go to calculate and multigroup analysis, I can select which groups I want. I want group A to be high frequency, group B to be uh, low frequency, and then I'll start. I probably should have selected uh, path analysis. Ooh. How uh, good it is, it is on path, and I have a thousand bootstraps there. Okay. And here we go. Let's look at the report. And uh, really, right now, I'm just going to look at the path analysis, uh, the coefficients. And I can see that well, if I expand this a little bit, you can see who they're for. This is high frequency, this is low frequency, um, and it's the same, same over here with the p values. So we can see that for, let me zoom in, uh, the effect from innovative or CSE to innovativeness uh, was fairly strong for those in the high frequency group and for the low frequency group. There's very likely no difference, and we can find out if there is a difference. But look at these other two. CSE to skill acquisition, strong effect for high frequency, no effect essentially for low frequency, and uh, innovativeness to skill acquisition, is a low to moderate effect for high frequency and a strong effect for low frequency. I'm not going to go and theorize about why this might be. I'm just going to show you how to assess it. If we go to the p-values over here, we can see which ones were significant. Notice um, the p-value here, not significant for that moderate low effect, but is significant for this group. Uh, same here, no effect uh, p-value and uh, moderately significant, less than 0.1. Um, here and for this where I said there's probably no difference the p-values are both significant now the question is uh, are the differences actually significant and PLS does this for you if you go to the parametric test it does if I show you here it does high frequency or group 1 minus group 2 and shows you the difference and shows you the t-value for the difference and the p-value for the difference so are they different? And the answer is unfortunately no. Uh, none of these p-values are significant. This is the p-value for the difference. Um, and again, there is no significant difference. So can we conclude that, that uh, high frequency and low frequency groups are different? And the answer is no, we cannot. Um, if we had more sample size, perhaps, maybe. Um, we have fairly low sample sizes, so that might be part of the issue. But there it is. That's how you detect if there's a significant difference between groups. Uh, look at that parametric test. And that's a multigroup analysis. Not that complicated.